Rene, thank you very much for being here with me. It's really an honor to be here with the number one of the world, the best chef in the world, so it's, it's really exciting, you know. And, well, we are in, not in an easy state. We are in Yucatan. Rene Recepi is in Yucatan, and Rene Recepi wants to see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Yesterday you said that uh, perhaps in seven years you're gonna you're gonna visit me here and you're gonna you want to see the Mayan cuisine you know, transforming itself into the best of the world. Mm -hmm. But I want to make a little recount of, of things. Rene, when I uh, researched some of the of the name of Noma, the region of Noma, you always put uh, Nordic and math. I think that's the way that you find yeah. it, right? Do you need to be math to make these kind of things? Well, remember that math is also food in age. Yeah. And of course you need to be a little mad. <laughs> uh, but it's also crazy in English. So. Yeah, it's crazy in English, exactly. And um, I think yes, because obviously any person that I, that, I, that I will tell right now that perhaps you, the Mayan cuisine is the next best cuisine in the world. People will, will, will start yes. laughing a little bit and, and nobody would believe it, especially not the locals. Mm -hmm. So that's a mad thought in itself. And, uh, and I think that it, the same was for us when we opened in 2003. Um, people never expected that this could ever happen for us in Denmark. Because we are in Denmark. It's yeah. a, Cold spot in the north of the world where you would think that apparently the growing season is short, um, products are not available in abundance, and, uh, and therefore being difficult to cook. Okay. Um, but it is possible, and, um, and what it takes is a lot of commitment and hard work and knowledge seeking as well. And of course, a talent uh, within a team that together uh, goes forward and drives forward to 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 go with the purpose of creating something. Do you consider yourself as a math cook, as a math person, right? In that kind of things, having math ideas, you know, some no. ideas that could be like uh, unthinkable for for others. Do you consider yourself as a person like that? Well, of course, if it's if you compare to normal human beings, <laughs> with that I mean uh, a person that lives and works in a bank. Yeah. Of course, perhaps they don't have the same ideas within food that I have, but my life is food. Every day I touch food, every day I cook food, I've been doing it since I was 15. But so my reference point for food is, is very different and much broader than the average person. And of course, what may seem obvious to me might seem very mad to others, but I, I I never go for mad things. I always go for for ideas or thoughts that I think make sense to me. To There's a purpose to it. Always a purpose to it. Yes. When you do things in the kitchen, when you when you thought of that kind of things, you saw that the Nordic is seen as the best of the world. No, I don't. You dream it and you dream about it. No, you don't dream no, about it. <laughs> well, maybe some. Your dad was drunk. One day I was drunk and I dreamed about <laughs> it, but. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even consider us being the best of the world because when it comes to taste, how can you define what is the best and what's not the best? Yeah. But Subject. nevertheless, this is a democratic uh, thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's 800 people, food critics and chefs around the world that are voting. And I believe there's also a panel in Mexico. Yeah. Um, and they vote. And the one who gets the most votes wins. Okay. That's it. It's democratic. Yeah. Nah, but it Great doesn't. Democratic. Yeah. But it doesn't say, of course, that we are the best because we do have guests at our restaurant that think we are not the best. But we also have guests that think we are the best. Um, so I don't consider ourselves being the best in the world. I consider us being a, a very important restaurant right now on the world scene because we we are shaping cuisine in a part of the world where. Where, where cuisine has been unthinkable. Yeah. Food there, traditionally in our part of the world, um, was something that you was something that existed just to survive, so to speak. Our traditional, pleasure in, in, in. Not a lot. There is a little bit. We have a little bit, 
there's a good baking tradition, okay. and there's also a tradition of making these sandwiches for the, for lunch mm -hmm. that has Fun, great great okay. pleasure. Yeah, that has great pleasure in them. But in the most for the most parts, we always been searching and borrowing from other cultures to experience great pleasure when dining. Mm -hmm. Like here. Yeah. Well, uh, of course, like here as well, but I mean, most of most I mean is from France, France yeah. or from Italy, Italy, Spain as well, uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. All these cuisines that have a great and high developed, um, high gastronomic cuisine. I mean, in Mexico has a fantastic cuisine, mm -hmm. but as such, uh, I haven't experienced a, a great. Uh, high cuisine here. You know, do, you, do you see the difference? Yeah. It's a very rural mm -hmm. and rustic and extraordinary flavorsome cuisine. Um, but that could be a great cuisine. That could be when do you transform it? When you can put it in a restaurant that could be the best in the world. I mean, this cuisine, this type of cuisine, raw cuisine you have tasted, yeah. it could be in one point it became the best of the world. Maybe. I mean, Maybe I'm not a I'm not a, you know I don't have a crystal ball I can't see the future and, and I don't like to make predictions but yes of course it could be the best in the world I mean Mexico has a recipe for everything here and there's all sorts of climate more or less except for very cold weather yeah. uh, of course if you go high up there there will be that but uh, the waters and um, the fruits. And the plants and so on and so on etc etc there's such a great potential and why not I mean why couldn't what why couldn't there uh, why couldn't it be the best in the world with what's already there but I don't know I think it's going to be difficult with the uh, with the basic cuisine that everybody knows that everybody yeah. feeds from mm -hmm. that being uh, considered something that shapes gastronomy in the world picture, I'm not too sure. I don't know. I think there has to be a twist to it, a, a new train of thought. And um, you think about it when you make it conscious and you reflect on it. And you always think about food that you can make another different or another type of food. Another that type of mean? food. Uh, for me, for instance, I'm very being here, very inspired by the ancient uh, Mexico. Yeah. Because the more and more I read and find out about it, there's such a uh, you know, a holistic view of life mm -hmm. that um, that seems quite modern today. Yeah, uh, the past is the future right now. And um, and you know the way that the Mexican, the ancient Mexico, seemed to have like a level of consciousness that was uh, just let's say very perfect. Mm -hmm. Why yeah, yeah, it was it was very. Very much in harmony, it seems, when you hear the, the gurus of, of the Mayan culture and you read a little bit. And, uh, and what's very interesting when you also read about the little I have read about what people eat, it's, it, there's a, a great variety and um, great balance. And there's great balance, and as well, contrary of today, people eat much more plants and vegetables and fruits. In nature, yeah. so there's an inspiration for something that can change from what it is today, and that could be the, the, the future. You know, that I you have to make an interpretation and adaptation. For me, if I were to come to Mexico mm -hmm. and I'm going to build my restaurant in Mexico, mm -hmm. I would not uh, rethink the taco. I would look into that type of history and see what. Imagine ourselves that the Mayans lived today. I know that they live today, yeah. but imagine that the culture existed. Mm -hmm. What would a restaurant, a Mayan restaurant, be of today? Oh, how, wow. how? I don't know, but it's it's an interesting thing. Yeah. I was thinking about it. What would it be if uh, if the culture still existed in this modern time of 2011? How would a Mayan restaurant be, and what would they serve the guests? It's really a challenge to think about it. It's a challenge, yeah, and and, great, I, I, and I think there's a lot. Of uh, there's a lot of potential in that thought. Yeah. Just in that thought. Yeah, I think in that thought, there's a, 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 a 
there's a you can start investigating and researching and gaining knowledge and ways of life, ways of yeah, I mean, ways of uh, uh, being at the table, yeah. ways of uh, uh, organizing a restaurant and ways organizing of organizing like a kitchen, you know, organizing a kitchen, ways of organizing a meal. You know, are we supposed to have seven courses? Well, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't know. It's your culture, you know. You have to do it. Yeah. Um, so that is just seems to me very very interesting.